<clears throat> Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh to some of you and peace out to the rest of you. Black Horse Sign of Black and again asking you to hit that share button um, because the message is more important than the messenger and uh, I'll get straight to it. The deal here is that, um, I mean, what we're dealing with in the long run is O'Shea, as you see in the title, and the uh, about face position he's made. Now, whatever happened between him and the man from the UK he hired to write, uh, personally, is not something I'm going to address. And I'm going to assume that there's something personal behind this as well. What I'm going to do is simply tell you all and tell O'Shea uh, what I have access to know, what I know from other uh, brothers from the UK. Where I am, I work with many people from the UK. I've learned differences in our English, but these are brothers. They're from the continent. They're from the Caribbean. Most of the ones I work with now have parents from the continent. And they were born and raised in the UK or they were raised in the UK from a very young age and they acquired citizenship. And they're now working with me here in the Arabian Gulf, teaching English as a second language and sometimes other subjects. We've discussed this. This is part of how I got to be red-pilled a second time working here. Um, I talked with a former colleague of mine when we were colleagues. Now, this colleague's grandparents, not his parents, but his grandparents, migrated from uh, Nigeria to the UK. And when he saw me and heard me talk, he was like, you talk like you're black. And I told him, I am black. The hell you mean like you're black? As you know, because I'm a light-skinned brother in denial. I'm light-skinned, but I keep forgetting I'm light-skinned, right? So, uh, of course, he had to say to me, well, uh, no, I, 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 I don't see you as black. I mean, we don't, we don't call you black, you know, in the UK accent. And I had to say to him, I take it you're Nigerian, right? I'm British. Okay, well, going back before that, I take it you must be Nigerian because y'all always the niggas that want to tell me that I ain't black. You want to tell someone else they ain't black. And a lot of y'all are about as pale as I am. But we actually got along well. He was the first one to give me a ride to the airport when I flew out to make my last trip to Morocco. My last trip to go see my ex in Morocco before we became exes. But this gentleman, um, this gentleman explained to me, over time that uh, colorism was a bad problem in the UK. He said to me that I would have been a big hit among black women in the UK. Um, and I told him he would have been a big hit among black women in the United States, depending on which region. He said to me, he was in his 30s, practicing Muslim, and he had never been married. Man was 30, he was in his 30s and a virgin. And he straight told me, he said to me outright, I'm probably going to live my life alone because I'm getting used to being by myself. And the older I get, the less a woman can do for me will come to a point where the only thing she can do for me is bend over in so many words. And I said to him, well, your body's probably adjusted now to where you wouldn't really be able to do much about that either. And he said to me, that could, that could be the case. It's been difficult, but it gets easier every year. Last I heard, he still hasn't married. I asked him, well, in the UK, what, what is it like? What do they act like? And the man painted for me a very grim picture of what black women in the UK act like. And we were talking about in the Muslim community. Now, I want you to factor in what happens when you strip away the discipline uh, that comes with Islam. Strip that away. Now, what are you left with? So what I'm saying is that the non-Muslim men in the UK, which would be the majority, black men would also have to suffer if they're dealing with non-Muslim black women in the UK. Just foolishness. He said to me that the difference between uh, the, the Muslim black folks and the non-Muslim black folks, meaning the women, was a hostility. In other words, the non-Muslim black women were hostile about their effery. They know it was Ephraim. They were proud of it. It was in your face. You were going to deal with this or nothing at all. 
if they were Muslim, it was just more like, well, I've got rights in Islam. I've got these rights, that right, that, those rights, those rights. And I want uh, every last one of them. And you have to be perfect. And so um, they just sort of politely priced themselves out the market. Problem is now you would think, OK, now, wait a minute. Now, she Muslim. She can't just take a penis casually. It's against the religion. Well, that's what they do. When they go long stretches of time without no husband, they do slip up and take some penises casually. Because they're human. The wisdom of God is infinite. And there's a reason that he told us not to do this. There's a reason he told the people of the book in general not to do it. The Jews, the Christians, and the Muslims. Why we're not supposed to fornicate. But of course they do it, and with whom they fornicate, well, these are the same men with whom all the rest of the women fornicate. So then they become addicted to what everyone else wants, but they still can't get the commitment. Plus they know, I mean, the chances are they're not fornicating with Muslims anyway. So they know there can't be a commitment there. It's casual. And then, um, of course, they don't want to irritate these guys about commitment too much anyway, because if these guys admit that they slept with her, there's a scandal in the community. So it's a mess in the UK. And I remember him saying, man, we, we really got a lot of bad stuff from y'all. He telling y'all, meaning us in America. And I stopped and said, hold up, bro. The U.S. came out of England. What are you talking about? And he said, oh, well, yeah, that's, that's true. That's true. I told him, yeah, remember the 13 colonies? No, bro. These two have been feeding each other. I had to break down the history and had to say to him, you got to understand, the U.S. and the U.K. have long been partners in corruption. Remember the first Gulf War, the, U the U.K. was in it first. Then Margaret Thatcher was able to drag George Bush in. World War I started with England. They were able to drag in the U.S. World War II England was able to get uh, certain support from the U.S. initially, but then, then, of course, uh, Japan supposedly bombed Pearl Harbor and drug us in. So this is three cases in which wars were fought. Now, granted, the 13 colonies in England fought a war for the two to become separate countries, but ever since then, they've had uh, a, an alliance closer than any two countries, period. Now, there's been a lot of deregulation in between Canada and the United States. There was. But between the U.S. and the U.K., that is where you have an, an actual alliance. They know, they, they, one goes to war, the other one goes to war. That's what's happening. One hand washes the other. They're both in the pocket of Israel anyway. So I'm telling you... I had to let him know what the history was so that he understood that the U.S. did not pr provide all of the corruption that's there in the U.K. And he may have been joking anyway when he said it, but the way that the sisters have been acting, all that neck rolling and eye rolling and finger snapping, attitude, uh, all that sass when it's unnecessary, uncalled for, and isn't even practical, I can't say that that came from the U.K. to the, uh, to the United States. I would have to say that, that went from the United States to the UK's black communities. I'd have to say that. I don't have evidence to the contrary. So I want to say, oh, shit, bro, look, you out there in Poland, you met some guys from the UK as well. You met black people from different countries. So I'm sure you've met some black Britishers. That's probably how you linked up with the gentleman you paid to write the articles. They know what they're talking about. Because over there in the UK, one of them wrote for the Manosphere now, uh, for Obsidian's uh, column i remember i can't remember the guy's name but he was he was describing a scenario that was exactly like what was going on stateside and i saw a video clip of um brits discussing whether women like bad guys and black british girls were sitting up here talking and telling black british guys you're too soft for me you're too soft i need a man that can handle me i need a man that knows what to do with me stuff like that same stuff as what you see in the states except for a difference in the accent there was no other difference. I'm not, I'm not raising my voice because I hate you, O'Shea. It's not that. I'm saying this as advice. Bruh, the UK is a victim in this case, maybe. I mean, the black British community is probably a victim in this case of their sisters because of the same mechanism by which we were victim of ours when it came to future generations and legacy. Have there been women that were abused in both cases? Yes. I'm all for being fair. I know of one. But let's also call it what it is. As a whole, 
as a whole, sisters will be the first ones talking about we don't tolerate that shit. So which one is it? You don't tolerate that shit or you abuse more. Come on now. I mean, people understand sisters can throw them hands. They get it. Sisters become afraid when the bullets and the guns come out. And even then, if a man is just as afraid as they are, they never forgive him for that. LAR movement covered that point very astutely. When the guns come out, she's not going to be Bonnie and Clyde aiming guns back trying to shoot. She's going to be with her hands over her head screaming for God and Jesus, God and white Jesus at that. Terrified. Taking a dump on herself. But when she sees that man got a wet spot in his pants, even if he's aiming guns and shooting back in self-defense, but he just got nervous and peed on himself in the process, she is still going to never let him live it down. It don't matter she shit on herself. He shouldn't have pissed on himself even while he was protecting her. So what I'm saying is if, um, yeah, the UK is not... Uh, some it's not some different world it's a different country yes but it's not a different world and the problems that our communities are facing in both countries they're the same believe that so um go easy on them i mean this whole thing of you're not I'm, I'm sorry it's going too far it sounds like a case of that maybe that maybe it is maybe not but th that stuff is going too far this is there's a lot uh that that we'd be able to learn from them and vice versa and that's really all i wanted to tell you thanks for listening Assalamu alaikum, sign a blackout.